All right, hello, hello, and welcome. Hopefully this is working now. I was having some technical difficulties there for a minute. Oh, there we go. All right. Hello, hello. Let me just share my page over there on Facebook. Hope we can get it going here. Just got to find it. <laughs> there we go. All right. Just give me one second. We'll get going. I was thinking about doing another Josh Black. Just because I've been having so much fun with these. And this whole page, the whole page is just wonderful. So, um, yeah. Okay, one more thing. More options. Share to a page. New character workshop. And go. Okay. And done. All right. How is everybody doing today? Hello. Hello from Mexico, Minnesota, India. Hello, hello. All right. You, get, you guys ready to get started on this one? Okay, so I just thought, thought this punk guy, I don't know if you guys seen this page of, of uh, that Josh Black drew up, um, but it's wonderful. It's really fun. And I decided to do this guy today. I'll show you the page. So here's the page. I don't know why it's so small. Whoop. There you go. So I've modeled this guy and this guy. I should say B and D. And today we're going to do F. I was thinking about doing E. But uh, yeah, there's just a lot of fun. So there we go. Back to A. Hey, what's up, Neil? All right. You like to eight? Yeah, there's there's a lot of good ones on there. I could honestly model any of them. If, you know, they'd all be fun. Okay. Um So, as I always start, I usually make this first sphere his cranium. And we'll just drag this down. And um, I like to put the second one in its own poly group there. So how is everyone today? I just made my gizmo go clear down to who knows where. You're in New Mexico. <laughs> well, welcome. I have friends there. Stretch this out. Okay, from Russia, hello. Welcome, welcome. What time is it where you are in Russia right now? Hey, what's up, me? from Brazil 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 Wow all over the world is that crazy I can't believe that people from all over the world can join each other hanging out hey Mohammed Bangladesh <laughs> crazy Hey, what's up, Chuck? A green head and a huge tongue? Kind of. <laughs> what new features of ZBrush have you implemented into your workflow? Um, well, there's been a few recently. Um, the main one is the dynamic thickness with the new, the new dynamic, um, dynamic subdivisions. It comes with thickness. I use that all the time. And then, of course, there's a the new cloth stuff. I might use the cloth stuff on his... Uh, kind of shawl thing that he has on right now. Um, I haven't used it as much as I would like to, but um, yeah, been using that. His neck is long, long, long. I'm from Argentina. 
Australia. Hey, Caitlin. Um, how would you recommend to start learning ZBrush? Uh, well, there's a couple things you can do. Um, if you don't have ZBrush yet, you can go download the ZBrush Core Mini. I think it's called ZBrush Core Mini. It's free. You can dabble around in there and see, uh, kind of learn the user interface um, and just start sculpting stuff in there. Uh, because, you know, you, I think you said you, you're a Blender user. Um, but the, the art skills transfer, right? So you, if you can sculpt, you can sculpt. It doesn't, the, the tool is a tool. Um, and of course, ZBrush is one of the best, uh, sculpting tools out there in my opinion. So, uh, so it helps, but, um, at the end of the day, a tool is a tool. So, um, yeah, I just recommend getting in there and start playing around with it. Thanks, Neil. Chris, indeed. Um, and uh, the next step, if you want to, you know, get in, get into, so ZBrush Core Mini is like dipping your toe in the water. If you want to put your foot in the water, you can grab uh, ZBrush Core, which is kind of the next step, and it's not the full price, and it has a lot of functionality. They just barely added a Z remeshing functionality to it, um, although on a on a smaller scale, but it's still in there and it's still useful. And it has um, Sculptress Pro in there. It has, uh, I believe it has Dynamesh in there, um, a whole bunch of stuff. And I'm thinking about doing a, a live stream in ZBrush Core coming up soon um, after I get more comfortable in there. But uh, so you can check it out. Um, and then if you're interested even further, then you can invest in the full version, of course, or even a subscription if that's your thing. So you're not a sculptor, mostly pose and animate. Yeah. Um, so. So ZBrush is a digital sculpting software. It's not, it, it does some animation, but I wouldn't call it animation software. Um, you can pose in here, but um, it's mostly posing for like say collectible toys and figurines. Okay, I'm gonna make his cranium really tall and small. <laughs> tall and small. see oh i got my first resin printer and delivered today did you did is it the saturn did i just see you post about in the forums about the saturn is that the one you bought that's crazy congrats that's cool Uh, let's see. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Could you explain your fill brush? It doesn't react the way I thought. Uh, yes. Um, hold on one second. Let's see. I've been using Blender for about a year and only started dabbling in sculpting in ZBrush. Would love to do one of your courses, but not sure if I need more sculpting knowledge first. I, I, I take you from nothing, like your first day in ZBrush all the way to advanced. So... It depends on you know if your uh, your your level of commitment and how much time you can spend and uh, because it is a definitely a journey and an investment. So, um, but I I do start from day one, so you you don't have to have a bunch of knowledge under your belt first. It does it helps more if you have artistic knowledge than sculpting knowledge or technical knowledge. Um, okay, so the fill brush, the fill brush works best on high resolution sculpts. So if you're, let's, let me save this first. Uh, Josh Punkhead. Punkhead one. Okay, so if I load the one I was working on last week, which is skinny head four, this guy right so this is the guy i made the last two sessions um and basically what you can do is use the fill brush there's a fill brush and you can build it up or take it away it doesn't work very well with low resolution meshes so that's probably where you're getting tripped up uh you know you're trying to trying to use it but if 
if you select this is a dynamesh or not a dynamesh a sculptus pro mesh see it has a lot of little triangles so it's very dense and it works really well on a uh Dynamesh, or uh, gosh, why am I saying Dynamesh? It works on a very, very well on a Sculptress Pro mesh. Okay, so you can see the buildup right there. It's very slow. It's very smooth and clean. And um, you can also use it to, if you hold down Alt, you can cut into the surface. So it's not just a fill brush. It's also a takeaway brush. <laughs> so very subtle, very clean when you're, you know, working towards the end of your sculpt and you want to build something up slowly. I used it on these brows. You can kind of see this subtle buildup behind the brows right there. I used it for that, for that. And like this skin coming down off of the nose right there. I used a combination of the fill brush and other, other brushes for that as well. So like say if I wanted to cut an extra shape into this ear, I could just hold down Alt and just kind of slowly cut it in like that. You were using it, yeah. That, yeah. You, it doesn't work with low resolution blockouts for sure. You don't want to use it for that because it will act in really strange ways. Do I have a channel or something I can follow? Uh, I have. Well, you can follow me on um, Twitch, which is Shane Olson Art. So you can follow me there. And I'm actually going to be doing a lot of YouTube videos coming up in the in the near future. But I have two channels. I'm thinking about um, I'm thinking about embracing the one that is my name. So it's Shane Olson on YouTube. Um, and I also have 3D Character Workshop on YouTube because I teach a an online course. And um, people search more for my name than they do for my course because a lot of, not a lot of people know about my course, but they find out about it through me. So I'm thinking about <laughs> um, investing in my my YouTube channel. Anyway, so you can find, just do a search for Shane Olson over there and you can follow it. And hopefully I'll get some videos up there soon. Some more videos. I don't have very much up there now. Okay. Yeah, this will be, this neck thing will be tricky. Get some ears going on. Do you have any experience selling STL files? Uh, I don't. I'm, I have experience with, with STL files a lot, but I don't. I just worked, I worked for Disney for 10 years, Disney Interactive, working on Disney Infinity. That's what most of these characters back here are. You can't really see them very well. But like there's the Hulk right there. <laughs> Hard to see. Well, I have some right here. Like here's Mickey Mouse that I sculpted. Anyway, um the yeah, I haven't I, I haven't sold very I haven't sold any, honestly. But some of my students do. Oh great, Yorkie. Okay. Awesome. Like I said, hopefully I'll be getting some videos up there soon. Now his ears are really interesting shaped, so let's see if we can get that shape right away. Hey from France. Hello. We have 204 people watching already. Crazy. I'm always blown away by how many people hang out and watch me sculpt. It's, uh, I, I don't think I can ever get used to it, but it's a lot of fun and I appreciate it. <laughs> and this guy has a super interesting nose. like one of those I don't know <laughs> it's like an arrow almost you know and then super sharp chin and then very gaunt um, what are these called 
the, the cheeks. <laughs> oh yes, I have courses. So over at the 3D Character Workshop, sorry, my mic is in my face. Um, yeah, go to the, so right above my head, 3D Character Workshop, if you go over there, I have one course right now. I'm planning on splitting it up into multiples, hopefully soon, but um and adding more products but right now i have one flagship course it's called the 3d character workshop where i walk you through making characters from start to finish all the way through to um game characters and um high resolution renders and uh 3d prints for manufacture and stuff like that if you want so um thanks and what uh for, as far as this user interface goes this is a user interface that i came up with and I give it away for free over on that website, right on the front page. So um, I'll just show you really quick. So this is 3D Character Workshop right here. And if you want to learn more about the workshop, you can click right here. And um, this is the character that I walk you through, the main character that I walk you through how to build. And um, if you keep scrolling down, right here is where you can get the brushes and the user interface and my ruler file for free just fill out your name and email and you can grab it right there and here's some of my student work um and i have a student community i always like to show off the community because my students I, I they just blow me away so um so with my course comes this community it's it's a lot like zbrush central you can see all the characters i have a top row um and a lot of the work that's happening over there is just it just blows me away yep so if you're interested in joining please do um there's a there's a lot of students in here and yeah really really cool so if you're interested please feel free to join us there's a 30 or a, sorry a 14 day money back guarantee so there's like no risk to you if you want to check it out all right A lot of my students are in here today, so if you want to ask them how it is, I'll let them tell you. <laughs> yeah, I'm always, I'm, I'm absolutely blown away by the work happening in there all the time. Okay, let's put in some eyeballs. Let's go higher res with these. uh snap them better so whenever you draw an insert multi mesh it will draw at the angle that you your gizmo was last left at so i don't know if you saw that but my gizmo my gizmo was turned like this so when you draw it out first it will align itself to the normals of the surface that you're drawing it on but if you hold down shift, it will snap to the last known location of the gizmo. So I want them to be aligned to the world, like X, Y, Z. So what I need to do is go back to the gizmo. If I hold down alt and I click on this arrow, the circular arrow, it's going to reset the gizmo. And then if I hit Q to go back to draw mode, I can click and hold this. But now when I hold down shift, you'll see it snaps to X, Y, Z in the world. So that's what I want. So that way, I can pull it back into the head like this and something like this. Thanks, Matt. You're the best. I appreciate it, man. <laughs> All right, wide eyes. I think I have his eyeballs too large, I would say. Okay, maybe bring him in a little bit more. a little bit there we go maybe something like that all right what is what am i listening to stop it it's like uh hey when they do dance versions of songs you know and it's just like it just gets so repetitious and repeaty it's like oh my goodness Studying ZBrush since April and kind of learning by myself right now. So thanks for the UI and the brushes. I've been using it since last week and I've been really helpful. Greetings from Argentina. Awesome. Thank you. I'm glad you and are enjoying them. Okay. 
So I'm going to I'm going to do something a little bit different with this guy. And um I'm going to make the nose into into a couple pieces. Is your mesh dynamically subdivided? Yes. <laughs> I'm I'm not on TikTok much, so I'm not sure I know which one you're talking about. Do you cover retopology in the course? Yes, I do. And it's, I mean, I, I teach a specific um, software, but what I teach is program agnostic. So you could really retopologize re anywhere. It doesn't matter which software you have to do it. Okay, what's going on here? There we go. Thanks, Neil. I need to hire you to be my marketing guy. <laughs> and it's true. Okay, let's get a nose on him, shall we? I'm a bit lost. Are you Dynamesh Mose right now? How do you combine the basic forms? So I'll get to that. Um, no, I'm. I'm. This is this is kind of a, a technique that I've came up with um, since doing characters for Disney. Um, I learned it kind of from Preston Blair. He's an old animator, and um, he teaches. It's like how to draw you know, whatever. And in his how to draw books, he basically breaks down the forms into very, very simple primitive shapes. And I'm, I was just wondering, hey, I wonder if that would work in 3D. And uh, I found out that it works extremely well. So I've been doing that ever since. And I just use um, this appen this uh, insert multi mesh brush, which is a brush that I, I built, which has all these primitive objects. And I usually use spheres, but occasionally I'll use a cylinder or this appendage brush. And um, and then I just brought, block out my characters like this. And yes, they are dynamically subdivided, which means that this is just a preview of a subdivision. And then I will, uh, I'll stitch it together later using Remesh by Union. I don't use Dynamesh very much at all anymore. I will use it to create uh, watertight meshes for 3D printing, but that's about it. <laughs> Any thoughts on doing a Bob Ross bust? Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> I haven't really thought about it. Maybe. Okay. Let's get... Let's build a nose here. Looks a bit like Woody Harrelson now. <laughs> All right. Remesh by Union, what is that? No uses Dynamesh to mix it. Nope. Uh, Remesh by Union is in the gizmo. So it's kind of hidden, but um, if you click on this gear, it's right there, Remesh by Union. And it will just take your mesh and stitch it together without rebuilding it. That's what I like about it. How do you know when it's time to man up and merge them spheres? Uh, you'll know it in your gut. No, it's, it's, when, um, it's when you have all the pieces in place. And you can, you can keep it separate for as long as you want. It's, it is a milestone. It is kind of a, a step to the next section of your workflow. So, but you can, it's, it's a non-destructive workflow. So you can keep it separate pieces for, yeah, until, until you want to move forward with it. Okay. 
I love it working that way. Okay, so grab. Just square this nose off a little bit. Yeah, it is really hidden. <laughs> no worries. How do I get start through? Are you in the course? Because it comes with the course. But there's also, um, no, there's actually the ruler file. It comes with the user interface. So um, you, you don't, it doesn't, um, it doesn't start by default. You have to double click on it. So it should be, if you hit the comma key, you should see it right here. And how you get it there is you have to put it in the correct place. It's a project file. So you have to put it in the project folder. Um, so basically, if you go to, um, if you're on PC, it's under program files, Pixelogic, your version of ZBrush. And then if you go to Z projects right here and put it right here, see it's right there. Start right there. So pop it in there. And then you'll see it when you start up ZBrush again, when you hit the comma key. Yeah. And you just double click it. Every time I start a session of ZBrush, I have my own project file, which I share with you guys. So that's how I start when I'm using ZBrush. So I'll open up ZBrush, I'll double click on that project file, which loads all my settings up, and then I will load a Z tool if I've been working on a model before. Oh, is that true, me? That's cool. So he said, if you uh, get the Z Startup Master plugin, you can make it open as default. Awesome. You have to leave for work. Can you watch live after on any place? So it won't be live anymore. I, I, I stream for two hours, um, and then, but it is recorded and put up on YouTube, on Pixelogic's YouTube channel. So you can go to uh, either search for Shane Olson or search for Pixelogic and you'll be able to find it. Thanks, Black Death. I appreciate it. Like your name. <laughs> okay. Where did you find all the sketches? Um, my friend Josh Black is a fantastic concept artist. And um, I've been working with him for, I think, five or six years now. And uh, he just does fantastic stuff. So that's where I find a lot of them. And then I just find a lot of them on Pinterest, um, ArtStation. Instagram, stuff like that. Okay, man, this guy's head is really round. Okay, sorry, let me, uh, great questions, but I need to keep moving forward here. Put everything in it, their own groups, mirror by weld, mirror, mirror and weld. And then going to, um, I'm gonna put this piece in here as a separate piece this time because this nose is, uh, is very interesting, specifically designed. Use the snake hook brush for this. So just so you guys know, the snake hook brush is essentially just another type of move brush. It's very uh, stretchy and elastic. And I really like the, the way it moves the geometry for specific purposes. And um, this happens to be one of those purposes. Mm -hmm. 
All right. Which brush do you use to create the angles, corners of the nose? Um, good timing, Clash. I just, I, uh, mainly the snake hook brush right there. And just move it, just kind of pull it. Um, you can use a combination of, say, the pinch brush and stuff like that. But usually I'm just using move at a smaller size or, or snake hook at a smaller size. And one more piece I think I'm going to put in here is the throat. Rather than uh, dragging this down into this area, I'm just going to fill it with a, with a piece. Let's go with a lower one. And then just kind of edit this one. See how that works. I don't usually do this. But I wanted to try and see how, if I could get it to work. I should have went with a larger or a higher resolution sphere. Because I'm running out of resolution very, very quickly. Because I stretched one side of it too far. <laughs> Instead of left some of these loops in the front here. There we go. It's like a goiter. <laughs> yeah, I don't know how much I like having a separate piece there. <laughs> yeah, Inspector Gadget. Love that. Love that cartoon. Okay, I'm going to take a second and Z remesh everything at a six and see what it gives me. I'm going to keep groups. There we go. So basically Z remeshing will rebuild the entire mesh of each piece and it, it'll give me more geometry with this rope piece. It'll also uh, make, make the uh, density of all the pieces the same or similar. So when I go to uh, stitch things together, hey David, how's it going? Um, it will it will behave better. So an another way to create um, create polygroups because this nose is in the same group as this throat piece, and I don't really want that. Um, what I can do is mask off the piece I want in a different poly group and hit control W and it will put that in its own thing and then I can hide it so I can just work on this piece hey speed bunny thanks yeah it's a really cool design okay I think that'll work and I can also put in the sternomastoid but I think I'm just going to Use the standard brush and bring those in by hand. Okay. Hey, Rodrigo, how are you? Got some really interesting ears. Okay, let's get a mouth in there too before I stitch these together. Sometimes while using move brush, when geometry is on the side view, I cannot catch the back side to pull it and it creates some kind of horn structure. Is there any way to like soft selection? Um, 
you're talking about like this, um, like sometimes you'll, you won't grab the exact front and it'll do something like this instead of, um, usually what I'll do is I'll, I'll snap it to the side using shift and then you can mask the area off that you want to pull, like say that. I'm holding down control plus alt so it, it's like, it only masks off um, everything you don't want to move. Then you could blur this mask by holding down control and tapping on the surface. And then you can use the gizmo to pull it out like that if you want. There he's got good kissy lips. <laughs> if that makes sense. Um, so you can do that or you can slightly turn the camera. It's, it's a little difficult, but you can slightly turn the camera and use the move brush and just make sure you're pulling out the thing that you want. Debating, debugging the plugin. It seems I broke a few things when doing the Mac bug fix. Uh oh, <laughs> that's not good. Quick question: How can I create mirrored poly groups, for example, for the hand and fingers? Um, use I use mirror and weld, and make sure that you have local symmetry turned off. Uh, for example, if I do auto groups right now, you'll see that it put the ears in separate groups, so they're not symmetrical anymore. So if I go to mask this mirror, this ear, it's not going to mask the other mirror. Yeah, why did I say mirror? Ear. So what you need to do is you do a mirror and weld, but let me show you what happens if I do mirror and weld with local symmetry turned on. Well, it's gonna do the same thing. <laughs> but sometimes if it's an object, it will mirror on itself over on the side instead of across the center line. Uh, just make sure you have that local symmetry turned off and then do a mirror and weld and then you'll have it. Then you'll get symmetrical poly groups. I learned that from my good friend, Steve James. Shout out to Steve if you're watching. Um, yeah, he's, uh, he's a good friend of mine. So anyway, um, that's how you do it. Um, uh, Thanks have been very uncomfortable situation. The trick might be comfortable. Yeah. Um, why do you sculpt with visible mesh? Do you try and keep the topology clean for those stylized characters so you don't it just it just helps me with the volume and help help me be able to see the volume because it's almost like if you've ever sketched uh and you're sketching with contour lines, it kind of helps me see the contour a little bit better rather than trying to read the surface like this, or I will change to a different material to allow me to see it better. Um, I don't have my, yeah. I, I usually use, um, I, don't, I haven't loaded them in this version of ZBrush yet, but I usually use Zebro, uh, my Zebro materials, um, like Zebro Gray and Zebro Sculpt. Those are really good ones, but um, Anyway, that's why I like to have these on. So I can see the separate parts and I can kind of visualize it better. And I, I only use that, I only really turn on the topology when I'm doing block outs like this. Does ZBrush keep the meshes quads while remeshing? Uh, yeah, for the most part, it does. If you do Z remesh, it does. But it doesn't, now the next question is going to be, can I use this for a game mesh or animation? The answer is no. I think I get that question every, every single session and it's a good question, but unfortunately the answer is no, because you still need to, you still need to put, you, you need to retopologize for deformation and Z remesher won't give you that. It'll give you a good sculpt mesh baseline, but it won't give you a good animation mesh. I wish it would, but I don't, I honestly don't know how you would program that. Okay. Got to move forward here. I'm just going to um, make a new poly group where the mouth's going to be here. I'll be right there. Yeah. Something like that. Yeah, Black Death, I just threw that out there for the, 
I know somebody was asking, was thinking about it. They were thinking. <laughs> so extrude, polygroup all. And I'm just going to bring this into the head a little bit. A couple times. And then once really far in there. Do you still give mentorships? Uh, no, I haven't really given. I've I've been thinking about it. Um, but I I usually just teach my online course, and it's it doesn't it doesn't come with one-on-one -on -one mentorships, but it comes with feedback, Q and A in the form of Q and A sessions and a, a, a community forum. I'm going to put a few more loops in here and use the inflate brush and hold down alt and inflate it opposite into the into the mouth just to give it a mouth cavity. Oh, too fast. Yeah, something like that is all you need. And I'm just going to smooth this out to give the Z remesher something to follow. Um, will you retopologize by hand based on the high poly mesh or just use the lowest version of the low poly mesh when baking? I usually will retopologize it and then I will bake to that. Oswald, you're pretty proficient in ZBrush, but with realistic hard surface. Awesome. You're looking into getting into stylized. Yeah, it's not it's not that big of a step to to do stylized stuff. Okay, let's uh, let's just stick with this, and I'm going to stitch all this together. So let's duplicate. So somebody's asking, when do you know? And all the pieces are here, so I'm ready to stitch it together. So let's unhide my gizmo and get it in the center. And then do a remesh by union. Okay, and basically what that does is it stitches all the pieces together. You can see all the stitching happening all around the edges where the objects collide right there okay so then i'm going to go accept and turn symmetry back on because it will turn symmetry off automatically right neil <laughs> sometimes i forget okay so at this point um i've been really enjoying sculptress pro lately so um at this point, I like to turn it into a Sculptress Pro mesh. And all I need to do for that is basically I, I'll start here and then I'll add triangles to the surface. And how I do that is I go to any brush that works with Sculptress Pro and it could even be smooth, okay? But move does not work with Sculptress Pro. So you'll see the Sculptress Pro button grayed out so you can't activate it. So, but if I hold down smooth, you can see it become not grayed out and I can push it. So I'm holding down shift and I activate it. Now, right now by default, Sculptress Pro will uh, adjust the density based off of your brush size. So if I were to smooth this out, you can see it, it adds triangles based off my brush size. So if I went with a smaller brush, it will make tighter triangles. Now that's all good and fine, but um, I prefer personally to um, set my triangle size to the world so it doesn't matter what size my brush is. It will always give me the, the size of um, triangles that I want. And I'll show you how to set that up. So basically you'll need to go to Stroke and go to Sculptress Pro, hold down Shift, Turn off at adaptive size. That's what it's it's adaptive to the brush size. And then uh, by default, I, I have this on my user interface. If you want to go download my user interface, it's it's right here, the subdivide size. Okay, it's it's in it's the same. I grabbed it from that menu and put it on my user interface. 
But right now, usually, it's uh, way too large of, of triangles. See that? Way too big. And that um, the triangle size, when you turn adaptive size off, it is relative to the world. So if you want smaller triangles, you can do two things. You can either reduce the subdivide size to a smaller triangle, or you can increase your model size in the scene or both, okay? Because sometimes you'll crank this all the way down to the bottom and your triangle still won't be small enough for what you're trying to do. But usually I will um, put it somewhere here to start with to test, okay? That's, that's not bad. Maybe a tad smaller. There we go. Okay, and what I can do too to get me closer, so um, it's not going to give me the facets. See, if, it's, if I do this, you'll still be able to see the surface facets because it's a low resolution mesh. So what I can do first is subdivide it once by hitting Control D, subdivide it, and then delete that subdivision level. Okay, now it's closer. Now I can start and uh, just kind of use Sculptus Pro and, and uh, clear out all these stitches and just kind of, uh, it's basically reworking the mesh in these areas. And sometimes it won't even change the mesh because the triangle slash quad size is pretty much the same. That's true. Uh, yeah, t if you have dynamic, turn it off. If this is on, turn it off because it, it doesn't work well at all with Sculptus Pro. Okay. Thanks, Griff Tricks. Uh, yeah, I try to keep, I mean, Twitch is, Twitch is hella toxic, right? Or it can be. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I try and keep, keep the riffraff out if we can, if I can help it. All right. So now I can just start, now that my surface is kind of starting to um, be workable with Sculptors Pro, then I can just start, start uh, refining the, the shapes. How to avoid the shrink effect with Ziri Mesher? Um, I honestly don't know of a way. That's kind of how the algorithm works. So, yeah, I'm not, I'm not really sure. I just kind of embrace it and, and let it do its thing and then fix it afterwards. I know that's not the answer you want to hear, but. Now I'm using the fill brush and I'm cutting this, this jawline in. And what's great about Sculptress Pro versus Dynamesh is I can close his mouth and it won't stitch together. If I were to Dynamesh this after his mouth is closed, it will definitely stitch it together. Okay, let me inflate this, finish closing it off. And you can also temporarily turn off Sculptress Pro anytime you want. So while I'm closing this mouth, I don't necessarily need it to be adding more triangles, so I just turned it off for a second. Um, let's see. I saw a complex number of steps to not lose your geometry when splitting up model for king for 3D printing involved duplication and projection. Yeah, so, I mean, Griftix, it's, you can get it back with projecting, um, projecting one mesh to another and it will, it will re, redo the volume. That's, 
to me that's a workaround but a way to actually change the remesher to not shrink that that doesn't exist but yeah there's workarounds to bring the volume back if you want it and that's a good point so you can use project all to to bring it back if you yeah you basically just duplicate the mesh and then just have those two meshes shown do what you're going to do to the new mesh and then project the uh, new mesh to the old mesh and it will yeah it will re rework or re reset the volume to what it used to be you can do that with the details as well and the colors because the remeshing and dynameshing will remove your poly paint so but you can project it back on the surface of your model if you want is that okay to sculpt with dynamesh on instead of dynamesh um i mean you can sculpt with whatever you want there's no right or wrong so i'm just telling you this is what i i personally prefer uh, now i like dynamesh a lot but i prefer using sculptors pro because it's just i won't run out of uh i won't run out of geometry and i don't have to rebuild my mesh it'll just give it to me as i go so Let's see, is there a situation where a mouse is more convenient inside ZBrush? Um, not, not really. Um, I mean, that's another, it's another personal preference, whether you want to use a, whether you want to use a mouse or a, you know, a pen. But as I always say during my streams, using a mouse is like using a toggle switch. And using a pen is like ha you have levels of subdivision so or levels of um what is it called pressure sensitivity not subdivision oh my gosh my brain is messed up today i need more water hold on so um basically you need you need to get a a, a, a tablet so you when you're sculpting and you're pressing into the surface you can you can control how deep it goes into the surface with a mouse, you can control it, but you have to control it with intensity up here. And it's only, a, you you know, it's like stuck. You can't, yeah, it's, as Neil says, foot to the floor sculpting. And I always compare it to having a toggle switch in your car instead of a gas pedal. Like what, you know, how would that feel? Not, not very nice. So um, you can use a mouse for certain things. Like if you're just moving objects or using the move brush to to move stuff around, then sometimes I'll use the mouse, but not when I'm trying to cut details into the surface. Okay. I got a job as a QC artist at a AAA game company. QC artist, are you talking about like a, like uh, quality control um it's it's a great way to get your foot in the door at a game company but is it is it a good job it's good depending on how old you are and how much money you need because it does it's temporary and it doesn't pay very well um but it's a like i said it's a great way to get your foot in the door of a game company and learn you'll learn a lot but like I said, it won't, it, it doesn't, it just doesn't pay very well. Okay, hold on a second. Going to go load a zebra material. And usually they hire all the, they, they usually keep on just a few of the people, the quality control people. And they lay the rest off at the end of the game. So let's see if I have any materials in here. Uh, there we go. Maybe I want gray. Okay. You're 24 and it's paying average. Yeah, then it should be fine. Should be fine. Like I said, you'll learn a lot. You'll meet a lot of people. It's a very, very good networking opportunity for sure. If they let you go talk to uh, some of the workers that work there. Um, if you're, say if you're wanting to be a, a character modeler, 
you can you can go and ask character modelers that work there at the company that you work at see if you can go talk to them if they'll let you and let, ask ask them if you can like job shadow a little bit without being annoying you know sometimes it's frowned upon because they're usually by the time it's time to hire q a or uh, quality control um that's when people are crunching and they don't have time to spend talking to people very much. Uh, not really. I mean, you. I mean, you can put it on your on your resume, like because it is a it is a game job, but it's not it's not character modeling experience, right? So it will qualify you for another quality control job, you know, not necessarily a character job. But it's, it's, like I said, it's better for networking and, you know, meeting people because maybe, maybe you'll meet the people that would be possibly hiring you as a game character artist later. And, um, modeling is only half the job. The other half is your personality and how well you fit. And if people like you. Yeah, and you have to have very, very good communication skills to be quality control because you're basically playing a broken game and then reporting on what's broken. That takes a lot of communication. <laughs> um, but to get a game character job, portfolio is king. You want to show the company that you can do the work. They're not going to go, oh yeah, you were hired on here as a, a, a you know, quality control person. Um, you know, they're not going to say that. They're going to say, let me see your portfolio. I want to know that you can do this job. Nice grip. That's awesome. I was an animator for five years of my 22 year career. So I, I dealt a lot with our animation programmers. And had to come up with animation systems. A lot of fun. Do you mean I'm going for a game tester or I'm going for a checking and reviewing 3D models and assets? Um, so, well, what, you tell me, which, which job are you talking about? Are you talking about a game, being a game tester or are you talking about being a, an outsource manager? Those are two different things. Because an outs like a quality control on modeling, that's different. That's like being an uh, a mini art director for the for the game. And yes, that counts towards trying to be uh, a character artist for sure. You're a UI programmer. Awesome. You worked on League of Legends. Gave them a crazy cool animation system. Awesome. That's very cool. I have a lot of friends at Riot.
Well, no worries. It's, you know, everybody, any, everybody does their time, right? <laughs> and moves on sometimes, so. It's all good. They called it a QC artist, and they sent me a ton of videos of sculpting UV baking, etc. Okay. Yeah, I so quality control, I think they're wanting you to be like a an outsourcing manager, it sounds like. And yes, that's different. And yes, that's a better job than game tester. So quality control is a game tester as far as like that's that that can be the title as well. But again, there is also outsourcing manager that deals with that stuff and giving giving the outsource companies uh, feedback to make sure it looks like the assets that are going in, into the game so they all look coherent cohesive have i ever done a realistic character with skin texture um one a long time ago in 3D Studio Max, I have not done one in ZBrush. It's, I don't know, it's just not my thing. I'd like to try it someday just for fun, but I have not yet. Hey, Saeed. Yeah, you can just ask. You don't have to ask if you can ask. I I appreciate the... Uh, I, I appreciate... You know, the, what am I trying to say? The politeness. There you go. You're always very, very polite. But yes, go ahead. <laughs> and you don't have to call me master either. <laughs> I, don't, I don't feel like I'm a master. I'm just, I'm just another guy. Now I'm a grandmaster. <laughs> uh, so good for future as a character artist? Sure. Yeah, I think it makes a that makes a better on your resume than than a game tester for sure. I was talking about a game tester when I was going off on all that stuff. Okay. I'm going to use this and build this up. So you can turn on transparency and see through the eyeball. Because what I want to do is build this up in here and make his, his upper eyelid. As you can barely see it in there and characters are just more appealing when they when, when they do have an upper lid I turn the subdivide size down a bit what oh gosh I want everybody to back up their art on the cloud Learn from my mistake. That's horrible. I'm sorry. Holy crap. Yikes. Six hundred kilometers. Oh goodness. Yeah. But use it use it as an opportunity to practice your uh your your game character art. And you know Honestly, too, you'll learn a lot from being an art director. I'm, I, I wouldn't call it an art director in front of them, but it's essentially the job is your art directing outsourcing. So you'll kind of learn a lot for as far as what they look for in character art. If it's if it is character art. Because for Disney Infinity, um, we we had a kind of a look sheet. 
that we would send off to our outsourcing departments or outsourcing houses so they would know what they would need to hit as far as the look is concerned. And that's not just with characters, that's with world building and everything else. Okay, let's mask this off here because I don't want to touch this upper eyelid but I want to pull the brow down around it okay so now Whoa, that's too much. <laughs> it's like a fine line. I just want it to inflate a little bit down around there so you can't really see it from the front. That's that's what I want. Okay. And then I can just come in here and clean it up a little bit with this smooth brush. Oh, it was rough, but for every person I reach out, I reach who backs their stuff up hearing the story. It turns my negative into a positive. Oh, goodness. Yeah, and also, um, on that note, I, I just kind of want to point something out that has saved me way more often than not. And that is um, autosave inside of ZBrush. So if you go into Preferences, there is... I got a... There's this thing called Quick Save, okay? And you can set the maximum duration how long you want to rest. If you want to keep the history or skip it inside of the file, it'll make your files either really big or not so big. Um, but if you want your history, you can keep it. And then the maximum amount of your quick save files. That's like when you go to load them back up, it's, it's how many iterations it's gonna save before it starts replacing the other ones. And I usually actually set this to like four um, instead of 10 because then it will just, it will save four every, it'll save one every 15 minutes is how I usually have it set up. Um, I'm going to switch this to 15. That's the minutes. Um, and then right here, if your files are too big, you can delete them out of, out of storage. So basically it's going to be backing it up every 15. If you're more skittish, you can go five minutes, 10 minutes. It doesn't matter. So now every 10 minutes it'll save. Okay. So um, and then where you find them is if you put push comma, you go to, I can't hit a quick save right now because you'll see the other things I've been working on, which I have an NDA, but um, quick save, you click on it right there and you can load your old files in right there. Um, let's see. How can I make Zizu Buffalo flat hoof? Um... So I would use the clip brush. After you make it into a mesh, use the clip brush and then just clip it off. So you can see his neck, right? His neck right here. So if I grab this clip brush, you hold down Control plus Shift and drag this line across here. Anything on the faded side of that line, it's gonna grab that geometry and smash it up against the dotted white line like this. See that flat now? And that's that's how I would make the buffalo's hoof be flat. Is like do that. Um, you can't you cannot do it in the Z sphere. You have to convert it to a mesh first before you're able to do that. So Z spheres are always spheres. That's that's why they're they're spheres because they're round. So um, there are now. I, so I don't know if anybody knows this. Well, some of you do, but I was responsible for the Zizu characters when they did the Zizu stuff. Um, and it's under tool, where is, it, where is it at? Right here, project. So under project Zizu. So if you click on here, all of these characters, um, PixLogic commissioned me to make these. And I made specific meshes that replaced the Z spheres that made it so I could do flat feet on some of them. I didn't use it on all of them. I just used it on some of them. 
and the buffalo i believe does not have flat feet so um yeah this is the bison right here so you would have to do the clipping curve brush uh to to make the feet flat for that specific one so hope that answers your question okay so anyway that's how you clip it when it's a normal mesh and um sometimes mirror and weld will create kind of this uh this 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 uh i guess you call it steam seam steam seam down the center you can just use smooth and just kind of smooth it out smooth out that head the skull to neck connection you can crank the intensity up on your smooth brush Sure you have Sculptures Pro on. There we go. This guy looks like something from Star Trek or something right now. Fernando, hello. Um, let's see. Am I missing questions? Hold on a second. Did that Disney Infinity character look sheet have a specific name? No, Sumerian. I don't think it's online. If that's what you're asking. <laughs> For sure, and I leech for learning things just by observing. Yes. Um, let's see. Bu, 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 bu. Hello from Iran. Hello. Um, where, why can't I mirror from minus X and then mirror and weld? I said because I have a subdivision. Yep, you cannot do mirror and weld with subdivision levels. So you'll have to get rid of your subdivision levels if you want to do a mirror and weld. And it only mirrors from screen left to screen right. So, um, yeah. Uh, that's right. Yeah, Chuck, I can't remember. It's funny that you remember that sculpt. Um, yeah, I did a vampire like a year ago. And he kind of, he, he does have uh, the rough kind of layout of that guy. Let's see. Uh, I'm going to put new art on the 3d character workshop community this week awesome i'm excited to share it with our fellow colleagues great for everyone else that wants to have a mind-blowing experience 3d stylized art i recommend the 3d character workshop from the bottom of my heart thank you so much fernando i really really appreciate it and i would i would love to have that as a as a living testimonial on on the website if you want to uh if you want to do that if you go inside if you log into the workshop and on your dashboard on the right hand side there's a place to leave a testimonial if you if you could do that that'd be amazing i would highly appreciate it and i love the love thank you <laughs> okay still keep pushing on this i'm just kind of looking it's got some crazy shapes that I want to get in here. It's like this really pointy cheek. And then we'll start getting the... This one's going pretty fast. This has only been an hour and 16 minutes. Um, you couldn't find the hairbrush. Which hairbrush are you looking for? Are you, are you looking for the... Yeah, there's, there's a lot of them. Straight. Some subtle little tweaks right now. I feel like a a, a golf. What are they? What are they called? The <laughs> my gosh! I want to say golf spectator, but the announcer guys, the golf announcers. Sometimes I feel like a golf announcer. He's uh he's going in with the move brush now and pulling on that uh cheek a little bit. <laughs> uh any holiday specials coming up for your workshop? I missed your up the big opportunity last time. 
Um, there's a good chance, but I'm also I'm also restructuring some things, so I can't say too much about it right now. Um, but but look look for that as well, which will make things more affordable. But it's also a good time to get in on it now because um, I'm going to be grandfathering in the current students into the new organization of it, which is a better, it will end up being a better deal than if you're coming into it new after I restructured. So, <laughs> Greenskeeper. <laughs> Yeah, one of my favorite movies is Happy Gilmore. I think I, I could watch that movie with my brother. My brother is a pro golfer. And we watch that movie over and over and over again. <laughs> hey, Jimmy. How's it going, man? I'm doing another... Uh, Another Josh Black sculpt. There's just too many. Um, yeah, Caddyshack's also another good one. <laughs> you know, I don't think I've watched Caddyshack from start to finish. I've only seen pieces and parts. <laughs> I'm doing good. Yeah, we're just, like I said, that, that page has just too many awesome designs on it. So I thought I'd do another one. So many great shapes on this guy. I think I want to turn this eye bag into his eye a little sharper though. And Jimmy, I have to say, man, that Robin Hood and Little John sculpt you did blew my mind. As Jack Black would say, blew my mind. <laughs> oh man. So if you guys haven't seen it, can you can you pull post the link up there? Or maybe Neil will. Oh, it's so good. So good, so good. Just uh talk about nailing a concept. Past few weeks, Jimmy's posted some excellent work before coming on here. <laughs> oh, I have a problem with the caricature face. Can I take from you some feedback and guide? Um, Said, I I don't really give feedback during my live stream because it's not fair to everyone else watching. But um, and I I usually do uh, feedback for my students. So I mean, I I don't want to say join my course and get feedback, but that's kind of how it works for the most part. Um, you can send it to me and if I have time, I'll, I'll try and give you some feedback, but, uh, my, my email is shane.olson at 3dcharacterworkshop.com. You can send it there. I can take a look. <laughs> yeah. You, you didn't make, you didn't make two characters in a week. Come on, Jimmy, you're slacking. <laughs> All right, let's get some uh, let's get some eyebrows on this dude. Hey, Speedy Bunnies, thank you. Oh, my back. <laughs> Switching from the tired dad to the grumpy dad. Oh yeah, I've been there so many times. Let's uh, speaking of saving, let's do a quick save before moving on. Mm. Let's twitch. Punk head two. There we go. Hey, I are. How's it going, man? You did nice. Oh yeah, there. There's a good chance that I'll end up sculpting every single one of these. So. <laughs> Okay, 
So let's take it from here. I know, right? <laughs> oh goodness. And now I'm granddad going on right now. So I got that. And he's here right now. You might hear him sometimes up there. He's the cutest ever. <laughs> dare you to show your NDA work? Yeah. You get sued. Yeah, dare you. <laughs> Uh, okay, split to unmasked points. Okay. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. When you when they have kids of their own. Okay, I'm gonna turn on uh, dynamic for this and then you can add some thickness. So, and then I want to uncrease all. I get rid of those sharp edges and then turn off post subdiv. And then we have eyebrows that look like this. <laughs> so I was thinking about the hair. Um, I'm, uh, yeah, I'll probably just make a shape and do some live Boolean action to, to cut out those pieces, you know? That's what I was thinking anyway. Let's curl this end up. I want his cheeks to come out even more. All right. I'm going to end my going to end my contract as a character artist. I don't know yet if I would go further because salary seems a bit mad to me. Uh it depends on where you live and it depends on the projects you're working on. I wonder if I'm dreaming or if my salary is that bad. What would you guys consider a decent salary for a mid-level character artist? Like I said, it depends on where you live and the project you're working on. Um like if you're working on a high AAA title in San Francisco or LA, your salary is probably going to be upwards of uh, six figures or more, maybe in the double six figures, um, depending, you know, and it depends on if you're senior, if you're lead, if you're, yeah, it just depends. Um, but if you're in, say, a, a different country and you're working for an outsource house, um, your salary is probably going to be pretty, pretty down there, pretty minimal. Okay, let's see. I kind of want to get that, that cool turn in the, let's see, in the eye bag here. Belgium working on Unreal 4 game, a new studio, their first game, but they aim to AAA level. Yeah, every studio aims to AAA, but if they're a startup, it depends on how they're funded. But uh, typically that they don't have deep pockets. I'll just say that. And Belgium's not too bad. Um, I mean, there's like, you know, there's there's Project Red in Poland, and I'm sure they pay their character artists well. Um, I know a couple artists working for Supercell, and their game is incredible. 
and as far as money maker and their salaries are are in, are crazy You understand this BS, right? I can make same characters from the moon and there's no reason to have three different salaries from the same job. So, um, it's, I'm, well, tell the studios that, but that's, that, that's reality. That's what they pay. So, and it depends on where you live. If you're a, if you're an immigrant, right. Or if you're like overseas trying to get work in the U S they're going to, they're going to pay differently. So I'm just, I'm just telling you based on my experience. You know, take it or leave it. Working in the industry for for twenty two years, and you know, at at seven different studios. Hey, Mosin, how's it going? <laughs> Jimmy, how do you go about creating characters like the ones in a YouTube series called Sherwood? Um, I'd have to see that series first, and unfortunately, I can't skip away to go go check it out right now. Um, but I'd have to look at it. But um, I it, it, the short answer is I would make it just like I make any other character, just kind of use the concept as reference and try and model it the best I can. Mike May, what's going on, friend? How you doing, brother? Oh, thanks, man. Yeah, I've lost some. I've lost some poundage. I've been doing some uh, whole food, plant-based stuffs, and it's doing me well. So, especially if I take my headphones off, I'm a skinny bugger. I still have some to go too. <laughs> uh, how I'm gonna tackle the stubble? I'm probably just going to use a little tiny bit of fiber mesh, or I might just make one hair and duplicate it all over the place. We'll see. <laughs> so you guys, uh, Mike May is a great friend of mine and um, we've known each other for a long time. And, um, yeah, 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 yeah. We've we've kind of had somewhat parallel careers. He's a he's a concept artist, a sculptor, awesome dude, extraordinaire, and he streams. So you should follow him and uh, check him out. There's your there's your uh, plug for the day, Merkel. <laughs> Thanks for dropping by, mister. Oh, thanks so much. Are these custom brushes? Yes, these are uh, brushes that I made based off of other brushes that other people have made. Um, and I give them away for free over on my website. If you want to check it out, uh, 3dcharacterworkshop.com. It's right above my head right here. Um, and just scroll down the page until you see the blue box and you can uh, fill out your email and get these brushes for free. <laughs> I like my t-shirt color, thanks. <laughs> so how you been, Mike? What's the latest?
Hey, what's up, Angry? How you doing, man? I can get this, uh, this kind of hair lip scar thing, whatever you want to call it. Um, I guess hair lip's not the politically correct term. <laughs> but the cleft palate, I believe, is what it's called. Apologize for that. All right. We'll go smaller with this. Okay. So if you ever run into this problem when you're doing Sculptors Pro and your triangles just won't go any smaller. So this is, I've maxed out the smallest these triangles would go. Basically your option is to scale up your model because the triangles are based off of the scene size. And uh, David is uh, working on writing something into the 3D Character Workshop plugin that will um, help with this. but. For now, what you can do is just scale this up. Let's check out, just turn on the floor. Basically send this down, turn on the pizza boxes, and then scale this whole thing up. Let me actually see if I can type in a number. Uh, deformation. Size. Here we go. Let's do one hundred and one hundred more. There we go. Now it's numerical, and I can shrink it by minus one hundred if when I want to. And we can also move it down to be centered. Oh goodness! I left my eyes behind. They must have been masked, and my eyebrows. Okay, so let's go clear the mask from those. Clear the mask, clear the mask. I wonder if it's if you type in deformation, it doesn't work with the pizza boxes. This is the first time I've tried that, and uh, I bet that's the case. Yep, it leaves them behind. So, can't do that. Just going to have to do it by hand. Let's do as close to three as I can get. I guess it doesn't really matter that much. Okay. That's awesome, David. Have, have you been able to do it without it losing? It's weird that the eyebrows got pushed in. Oh, you know, I think dynamic must also work with scene size, dynamic thickness. So I probably have to adjust the thickness as I scale it up. Uh, what if model's in pipeline and you can't scale it? Is there a fix? Um, yeah, so that's, that's kind of where we are at, Jimmy, is I've, I've, um, that's why I was trying to find a numerical value that I could scale it up, you know, by 100 or 200, and then I could reduce it back when I'm done. And, um, like I said, one of my students is writing a plugin in order to be able to do that. But what you can do, uh, not, not really, not really. I mean, I was just going to say what you can do is. Um, you could write a plugin to do it for every single subtool, but that's a major pain in the butt, right? Um, so, yeah, it's just kind of a limitation of Sculptors Pro at the moment. I've reached out to Pixelogic and asked them if they could adjust that, but right now it's that you just have to scale up your model that way. I wish there was. Okay, so now that it is scaled up, my triangles are 
much gonna go much smaller so if I want to I don't want to be this small there we go so I can do some adaptive size over the surface here and smooth that that out and then um, now that I have that I can go back with my detail brush and cut in much more detail if I actually grab my detail brush I know, Jimmy, right? I wish there was an answer. <laughs> I wish there was a better answer for that. Also going back to the salary question, um, I, I wish, I honestly wish there was a generic, you, this is how much it costs, right? or this is how much you're going to get for this much work. I wish that was a thing because I really, really hate negotiating for like freelance or whatever, whatever salary, you know, it should just be, it is what it is, but it, it just, it depends on, yeah, what it's like any art, right? It's like, what's this going to be used for? How many times is it going to be used and, and how, um, how professional are you or how good is the art you're going to produce um, and how long are you going to take on it based off of how much of a professional you are I guess you know because it's going to take a junior a lot longer to create something than a, than a seasoned pro would so unfortunately all those factors play in Um, can you recommend us a good workshop for rigging and animation? Yes. Um, I would check out Anim School. So, uh, my friend David runs Anim School and it's, it's been accredited recently, so it's legit, but, um, it's not, it's not just a simple video course like, like mine. It's more like animation mentor or something like that, but they teach uh, they do teach rigging and animation and all that stuff, the whole pipeline. Um, yeah, you might know him. Um, he used to work at Blue Sky, and he's from Utah. So, um, gosh, I'm I'm just, what is his name? He used to work at uh, at um, Viewpoint. Gosh, dang it, David, what is his name? Holy crap. I'll, th I'll have to think about it. My, my memory is going. Oh, I can picture he, he's a He was a big soft homage user for the longest time. And he knows like, uh, like Walter and Todd Sheridan and, and those guys. That's the era he is from. I got to look it up. David Gallagher. His name's David Gallagher. That's right. Oh, good. That was driving me crazy. David Gallagher. You'd like to talk about selling 3D sculpture? Some tips and websites we should visit? Um, I have not sold my 3D sculpts other than um, to, to companies that use them for their products. I have not sold them like on 3d print websites or anything like that so i really am not the, the person to ask when it comes to doing that um i mean there's there's places like turbo squid and they're they're so saturated that i don't know if you could make a living doing it um one of my students i think he's on here inspire right you you sell maybe you could talk to that um he sells STLs on his Patreon. I'll give you a little shout out there, Inspire. <laughs> How's, well, I'll let you uh, talk about that as much or as little as you want. 
<laughs> hey zero how's it going Um, so I gave it before it's, it's shane.olson at 3dcharacterworkshop.com. I hate to give it away on these streams because then I'll get a flood of emails. But, um, like I said, I'll, I'll, I'll try and look at it if I have time. No promises. Thanks, Neil. My mini factory cults 3d. And then there's also like, um, not sketch fab. I'm trying to think of the other ones, um, that, uh, that you can sell your stuff on the that sells prints like they'll do the printing for you you can sell them that way just be careful with licensing right like um if they're if they're licensed characters you can get shut down for it so just be very careful about that oh chris you're inspire holy crap somebody else was were you on a different i was thinking ir ir sculptor jeez chris Inspire. Okay. Yeah, you. <laughs> Sorry, Chris. So many people. Thanks for letting me know so I don't feel like a schmuck. I called I called David Doug for a while. Like old man. CG Trader. Shapeways. Thanks. That's the one I was trying to think about. Yes. So I feel so bad. You know, it's been done to me too. So, and, and <laughs> Mike, Mike may you'll, you'll enjoy this. So I was at, uh, I was at Lightbox Expo last year and I've always wanted to meet my, uh, one of my concept art heroes, uh, J Scott Campbell. He was there at Lightbox studio and I wanted to meet him. And I was, I was talking to my buddy, uh, Dave Igo. He's, he worked at, um, Sideshow Collectibles at the time. And, and, uh, J Scott Campbell's done a lot of stuff for Sideshow. And so of course they knew each other and I was talking to David, I go, and he's like, um, I was like, I'd always, I'd love to meet him, you know? And so David took me over. He's like, I can, I can introduce you, you know, no problem. He's like, Hey, Hey, J Scott Campbell, this is Sean. <laughs> I'm like, hi, I'm, I'm Shane. <laughs> and D Dave, I go, now it's a running joke between the two of us. And, uh, yeah, so, so, but sometimes it can be helpful when somebody gets your name wrong because now J. Scott Campbell, like, it, since that was a thing, he won't forget my name, what my real name is, right? Well, hopefully, we'll see. <laughs> yeah, be a part of the 3D print community, that's for sure. <laughs> right neil yep that's true yep so now like like i said i won't i won't forget david's name now that i accidentally called him doug okay where are we at now 146 all right let's do uh let's get let's get this at least the hair blocked out on him um how are we gonna do this okay let's do just block it out with a cylinder. Is that what I want to do? Let's try. Yep, right. That's the benefits. I won't forget your name now, hopefully. <laughs> okay. Just drawing a cylinder, snap it to the... Uh, I don't use shadow box. Sorry. <laughs> I'm not... I hardly ever use shadow box. Okay. Um... Gonna shrink this down, split it off. Whoops, turn off symmetry and snap it. Turn on the floor so I can see where center is. And I can just center it over that floor. 
then from the front, I can just do a mirror and weld. And now it's symmetrical. We're good to go. Um, uh, Black Death. <laughs> that's, uh, yeah, that's, that's not a question for me for sure. If anybody's um, had, paid somebody on Fiverr. So my, my answer, well, you know what? I'm going to answer that. My answer to that is there's, there's things called exclusive copyright. Okay. And you have to write that into the contract if you care about it. Okay. So when, when you, and it's going to cost you more money if you want to have exclusive copyright to whatever you, you pay them to, to do. And you have to make it clear that that's the case when you start out. Okay. So make sure you say, Hey, I want exclusive copyright for this character. And I'm willing to pay a little extra money to get that copyright so you don't turn around and resell it somewhere else. And uh, that happens all the time with concept art, with, you know, all, all that kind of stuff. So, oh, did I have a link? When I scaled this up, I scaled it from here instead of from the center. So let me turn on symmetry. So, Basically, that being said, there's nothing you can really do if he's done that now, if you didn't previously write that into the, the uh, contract to begin with. How'd you put the reference in ZBrush? Yep, yeah, uh, Spotlight. Um, so if you guys didn't know this, there is a series on YouTube called Ask ZBrush. Now you can do hashtag ask ZBrush and then ask your question on Twitter and it will get picked up by Pixelogic and they'll either direct you to the video that's already been made or they'll answer your question via video on YouTube. So you can go, um, and I know for a fact that that video has been made, how to do reference inside of ZBrush um, and you can go do uh, ask ZBrush for that and look it up on YouTube and check it out and how, how, to, how to do it. I also have a lesson on how to do it in my course. If you're uh, if you're a student of mine, I think it's module one, lesson two. I teach you how to do that. And I am thinking about moving a handful of my basic lessons to YouTube. Um, but we'll see how long that takes me. <laughs> oh, it hasn't happened to you? Okay. I'm thinking about doing 3D modeling in Viver, but it drives me nuts thinking of that scenario. Yep, just just work it into the contract and you don't have to worry about it. Like I said, most likely, unless you get a brand new, um, brand new sculptor that doesn't know any better, usually it will cost you more money to get exclusive license. Okay, what is going on here? Let's see. Hey, Ashley's here. What's going on? A cubed. It's A cubed. <sighs> How's it going? Just modeling a little bit of a punk hairdo. How's it going? So Ashley's another another uh, presenter on here, another sculptor on this Pixelogic Live channel if you don't know who she is she sculpts amazing monsters and stylized characters double threat so what's going on right <laughs> hawk reminds me of a uh, hawk on uh, that new that uh cobra kai show a kid who gets a mohawk and now he's all thinking he's badass <laughs> Oh man, that's probably where Josh got it, and he too has a has a cleft lip, I believe. Hawk, <laughs> sweep the leg. Hey, what's up, Sofo? <laughs> sweep the leg, Johnny. Oh goodness, I'm loving that show. It's good. <laughs> All right, 
let's get some color on this dude just for a minute. Um, but to do these uh, cuts, I'm gonna, I'm just gonna do a, I'm gonna do some live boolean operations. I don't know if we'll have time to do it today. We're almost it's almost time to be done. Made an amazing fantasy dog a few weeks back. I'm sure. I I think I've seen it. Oh, Monty, yeah, that, that, are you talking about the one she did for the ZBrush um, beta test for 2021? That, that is amazing. I love how it's balancing the bones on its nose. <laughs> so, Ashley, I've been playing World of Warcraft again. I don't know why. Well, I know why. My, my kids play it, so I've been sucked back into that world. And I have a, you can have pets, and I have a lava corgi as a pet, and it drags its butt on the ground and leaves a lava trail. <laughs> Cutest thing. Anyway, thought about your corgi when... Yeah, it was. it's pretty good. Anyway, there you go. <laughs> All right. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? Nice. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I I'm friends with a lot of Blizzard folks and yeah. All right. I kind of want to just grab this cut. Wow, that's way too pale. The pale rider. Um, are you asking me if I live in LA? I do not. I live in Utah. A lot of people think I live in LA. Yeah, very small, very small. I'll, most of my industry friends do live in LA. And I'm, I'm usually, if it's non-COVID season, I'm usually in LA at least two or three times a year. Okay, let's fill this, do some Let's warm him up. Hey, what's up, Carlos? How you doing? Yeah, COVID season can can go any day now. You know, I think I'm gonna do it a little more. Are you a fan of WoW? Ash, do you still play that game? <laughs> I'm playing a, I'm playing a druid because, you know, ADHD. <laughs> I can't make up my mind on what to play, so I play everything. Jack of all trades, master of none. You hung with me at CTN? I didn't even realize you live in, in Utah. <laughs> oh, man. For two months, couldn't get into it. Uh, oh, you play D&D online. How is that? So, yeah, I've played, I've played a lot of MMOs throughout the years. Like... Ashron's Call and, uh, oh, what is, um, EverQuest? EverQuest 1 is the one I, well, Ashron's Call is the one I started on, then I played EverQuest a little bit, and, and now WoW, and it wasn't bad. <sighs> Interesting. <laughs> and Mike, I don't, are, are you still on here, Mike May? I don't know. Mike May is working on, uh, I don't know if I, he wants me to say. You can say. <laughs> he works on an MMO. Okay. Um, oh, Guild War 2 is great. I did some characters for Guild Wars 1. It's 
some NPCs. See. I don't know why I'm using my mouse just to, to add color. It's like 100% red go. Boom. Okay. Oh, I turned on dynamic. That's why. Like, why is it all of a sudden slow? Um, also, just to throw this out there. If you're interested in these paint brushes I'm using, this hard paint brush and this soft paint brush, they come with my uh, brushes. You can grab them over at 3dcharacterworkshop.com. Download them for free. Give them away for free, and that's what I'm using to do this. Do this painting. So there's uh there's my my shameless plug of the of the day. All right, let's get some blue. Maybe into some yeah, something like this. Oh, don't crash. Oh, goodness. Did my, did my stream skip? <laughs> All right, let's give him some white. Not completely white, but semi-white eyes. I think I will keep it in the orange. There, there you go. Let's... Okay, fill it, and then his brows. Do something like this, but a little more saturation. No skips? Awesome, okay. Yeah, so that's kind of the, the color scheme I usually go with. It's kind of like a um, some blues down in the in the throat and, and chin area. Um, yellows up in the crown. And some reds in the like the fleshy areas, like the nose and the ears. And sometimes in the cheek, but this guy has very gaunt cheeks, so I didn't put too much red. And then the eye bags are very fleshy, so you can put them there. It's kind of the, the idea there. So let's go with some yellow up here. Hey, D-Pixels. Dr. Pixels, how's it going? Oops, coloring on the eyeballs here. Just a bit of yellow. And if you go too much, like if you take it too far, then what you can do is just grab skin tone from somewhere you haven't touched yet and then go back over what you've done and it will bring it will tone down what you added like say through here it's a little too red Let's kick it back at grifter that's um, that's a great piece of advice <laughs> Okay, I think I'm gonna wrap this guy up for today. And I think I wanna exaggerate some of these curves. Um, I wanna kick his chin out kind of in this direction and have his nose come like opposing curves. We'll have to see if that works out. But I do like adding this bit in the throat that I think that seemed to help. Ah, uh, let's see. Before I go, um, most amazing thing Shane and the community helped me figure out this the route, the steps needed to make something in ZBrush. Easy to apply Shane's workflow on almost any model. Thank you so much, John. I really appreciate it. Really appreciate it. Love the love. All right, you guys. Have a wonderful week. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. We're almost at 300 viewers. Um, I know there's like uh, always a lot of better things you could be doing with your time than hanging out with me, but I really, really appreciate it with all my heart. And, uh, thanks for hanging out. Um, and thanks for stopping by Ashley, Mike, 
um i feel like a romper room <laughs> and uh um and and the jimmies both jimmies hello and neil thanks so much for posting all the links i really appreciate it so uh yeah as as always and you you uh stream on uh wednesdays right ash so i mean if you want to see any of the other streamers you can always go to uh zbrush live type that into google go to the first link zbrush live and you can see there's a calendar there that shows who is going live when and you can also follow this channel uh, to be notified when new sculptors are streaming. There's a whole bunch of different sculptors, some that do um, realistic stuff, some that do uh, stylized stuff like myself. Um, there's some that do jewelry, all sorts of things. So uh, if you're interested in getting into other things other than stylized sculpts, please check the other people out. There's always something to learn, always something, something to gain. So uh, thank you, everyone, and we'll catch you next Monday. All right. Cheers. We'll see you. Bye.